Hello everybody and welcome to part three of our cross-platform development special. In this episode, we're going to go in-depth with Flex Builder 3. We're going to get to the cross-platform development in just a second, but first, we've got to tell you about our buddies over at GoDaddy.com. You see, GoDaddy.com is an amazing web host and domain registrar. That's true. And they've been supporting us for quite some time. They're and awesome. And of course, uh, let's see, what are the codes that we've got Well, available? we've got two codes. We've got Linux, which saves you 10% off any order at GoDaddy.com. That's L-I-N-U-X, all uppercase. And we've got Linux 2.0, Linux 20, and that's going to save you 20% off hosting plans at GoDaddy.com. That is beautiful. Yeah, please do utilize that if you're going to be using GoDaddy or any other registrar. Consider GoDaddy and use those codes. Help us out immensely. Uh, keeps things running. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, GoDaddy, and thank you for using those codes. Let's get into the action. All right. All right, if you haven't caught part one and part two of our cross-development series, you probably should catch up on those first. We've covered a lot of awesome stuff. Part one's great for total beginners, and part two, we go into the new QT Creator, which sounds really awesome. Hey, you even said it right this I time. I know. And so if you haven't seen that yet, you've got to check that out. But it's definitely worth checking out. In this out. episode, we're still sticking with the cross-platform overall theme, yep. but we're looking at something a lot different than what we've talked about so far. A lot different. And that's Flex Builder 3. Correct. So now in, in, in developing software for multiple platforms, there right. are a metric ton of options. Okay. And all of them have their pluses and their minuses. So before you dive into any major project, application or rich website or whatnot, it's good to have a good lay of the land of what you can accomplish with each and how much time it's going to take sure, and sure. what sort of skills you can bring to the table right. that will make it work right. worthwhile. So, okay. So now Q QT Creator we covered. Great for making a good, solid, native desktop applications. Cross-platform. Cross, cross Cross-platform for Windows, Linux, Mac, and uh, and uh, coming soon uh, mobile devices with QT Creator. Mm -hmm. So now let's, let's switch gears kind of dramatically in terms of cross-platform development for a minute. Now... Adobe's Flex has been out for uh, for the last few years, and it's yeah, built, it's of course, on top of Flash. Now, Flash is, of course, a proprietary uh, runtime environment. Most people yeah. utilize it for streaming videos from YouTube and whatnot. But the reality is... Or is really it's annoying ads. <laughs> really, really annoying ads. But the reality is it's very, very powerful. It is a... The current versions of Flash, Flash 9 and Flash 10, um, have the ability to run uh, ActionScript 3, which is... In essence, uh, ECMAScript, which is also JavaScript 2. Oh, okay. Now, here's the thing. Okay. It's a very powerful language. It's a very modern language, and it's a JIT real runtime compiled language, which means that while it's not necessarily uh, compiled at compile time, at design time, into machine-native code, uh, when it's run on uh, the client's machine, uh, it's JIT compiled, and it's very, very fast. Wow. Okay. But the it's downside... It's fast enough. The downside... It just the beginning I can think of with any Flex application is you do have to have the yep, Adobe have Flash, Flash player installed. Yes. Now, uh, or, it's almost... Or the Air runtime, which is what we're going to be okay. focusing on now. Which, so, which Flash itself is just almost completely ubiquitous at this it, time. The Air runtime, even, though, is even, not. Even on Linux, uh, where a lot of people are kind of anti-Flash, uh, right. we've noticed that most people, even if they have Linux, yeah. that come to, say, JupyterBroadcasting.com, they have Flash. Yeah. Uh, more people have Flash than Java. Um, so if you're developing for one of those sorts of runtime environments, it's one of the most yeah. commonly available ones out there. Right. So you can kind of assume that most now clients the, will have But it. the Air runtime isn't, but it's so it's easy not. to install. I it's mean, it's very like click, click, click and install. you're done. In fact, on some platforms, on, like on the Windows side, it can be an automatic install. Right. Um, uh, but uh, even when it's not, even it's though, a very Even on, on Linux and uh, on the Mac, it's still super, super simple. And it's a one-time install. It's not like you have to install a new edition of Adobe's Air runtime in order to make your applications run uh, for, for every different application. So um, what I want to be clear, if those of you who don't know what Adobe Air is, Adobe Air allows you to take applications built with Flex, which is a open source framework and SDK that sits on top of Flash. Okay, okay and create desktop applications that are standalone desktop applications. Well, not fully standalone. We'll get into that. But standalone desktop applications just with a normal icon. You double-click it. It launches an application, and it runs great. Yep. That's what Adobe Air allows you to do There's, from, uh, from the user I gotta standpoint. i got to say, probably the, some of the most popular ones I can think of would be Twirl and TweetDeck 
and there's an RSS right. reader out there. There's right. There, uh, I know a lot of our listeners out there use Toril and TweetDeck, so they, they which are Twitter clients. They really be very common when you're dealing with web services, and this is really where Flex shines uh, in a lot of places anyway. Now, Flex is very skinnable. You're not going to develop a Flex application and get something that looks, without a bit of work, uh, like uh, a normal Ubuntu Win32 or Mac OS X yeah, application. Yeah, it, it does look different. It's going to have its own look and feel. Yeah, I've noticed that. But here's the thing. People like that look and feel. If you do I it mean, right. If you do it right, yeah, they you do look a good pretty theme. phenomenal. Like I mean, TweetDeck's a good example. TweetDeck looks, looks great. It, so now most... Most Twirl, professional too. applications out there, like professional video and audio editing applications, whether it's from uh, Adobe, I guess that's a good example right there, or uh, or Apple, or many other applications, or or even on the Linux side, you got Ardour for the video for the audio editing. Mm -hmm. They all have kind of a, a professional style look and feel. They don't use the, the native, native tool, look, look of, yeah. uh, of the platform. They don't, or so as I put it, they don't really respect my like my GTK theme and things. No, like they that. do not. Yeah. Um, so now people, good and bad. this is uh, this is a problem for some. people people but for most people they simply don't care they want their applications to look and feel quality and professional right and adobe flex applications can really deliver that um so now they are very very skinnable so of course you can create your own look and feel in fact you can use css so if you're a web developer you can use cascading style sheets to really change oh. the way that your application looks and so you can uh, use css in a desktop app yes Exactly. Wow. Now, here's here's the crazy thing. So you can actually build an Adobe Air application that takes a lot of advantage of, uh, of you know, ajaxy like technologies. Sure. And utilizes, and there's some debate whether or not this is the right way to go, but Flex applications can use something called MXML, which is essentially like uh, uh, the Macromedia XML markup language. It's okay. kind of HTML-ish, but it's more for, for building these different types of applications. So, um, and of course, you have uh, ActionScript 3, which is the real meat and potatoes and the way to go. Now, 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 here's the thing. ActionScript 3, now that sounds like something I've heard is coming in a future version of Firefox. Too. It, it, it's in, the, in, this, in this next coming up version of Firefox, it's part of JavaScript 2, okay. which is built into the next version of Firefox. Because ActionScript 3 is actually, the engine behind it is open source. Gotcha. Okay. So, so now from a developer standpoint, now if you're looking to create an application and you're considering Flex Builder to build that application... Mm -hmm. Um, what are some of the pluses and minuses here? For to start with, Flex Builder actually sits on top of top of Eclipse. Um, now this has a it's like lot a customized version of Eclipse. It's it's a set of plugins basically. Oh, okay. So um, so and there's two versions of Flex Builder you can get. One is the plugin version. So if you already have Eclipse, you have a lot of projects going on in a lot of languages. You've which already got Eclipse it is out. great. You've got it dialed in. Right. You throw in some of your plugins. You activate them, and you can do your Flex That's development sweet. within it. It's like very that. very cool. Or of course you can you can get a full Flex Builder Pro package that is a customized version of Eclipse with all the plugins preset okay. and all that sort of thing. But it's basically just it's it's their own packaged up version of Eclipse. Right. And it's you could get that. And same it has thing. some extra stuff built into it too. But okay. that is that is the gist of it. Um, now it that, is great. It works phenomenally well. And they have they have that that for obviously with the plugins. But if you got their own right. package, could you get that for Linux and no. Windows? And uh, well, kind of sorta. So you okay. can run Flex Builder on uh, on all three platforms. Right. Just fine. However, the Linux version does not have a UI designer, uh, so you're that only going to be able to. Well, it's 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 uh, it's not it's not ideal. It would be nice to be able to see a real time kind of WYSIWYG UI designer on Linux for it, uh, but presently the UI designer is only for Windows and OS 10. But really, if you're developing a large scale dynamic application, you're doing a lot of your uh, a lot of your work in ActionScript anyway, right. and so you're not necessarily going to I actually see. be using the UI layout right. Right. Uh, WYSIWYG tools all that much. Uh, okay. It's it's more for the small tools, and uh, when you're really getting started, it helps a lot too. Okay. So so that's kind of one of the downsides to it is it doesn't have that available on the Linux side, but that's not that big of a problem. Um, the rest of everything works fine no matter what platform you're on. Now let's say um, you're developing um, a great example is just a Twitter client, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's very easy. Or if you're if you're even if you're an internal IT and you've got some sort of database on the back end that you want to give your users the ability to query. All right. So let's let's dive right into that. So let's say database query. Okay. All right. So let's say you want to put a nice UI on front of a database. Right. That's actually pretty simple to do within Flex. In fact, Flex offers a lot of very cool modeling tools to be able to put together nice charts mm -hmm. uh, that look really fantastic. And uh, the end user experience would be a, a, a desktop application that I've double clicked an icon and right. it, it's running natively it looks on my native. machine. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and it, and it looks phenomenal. Now, one of the great things about building stuff in in Flex, Flex Builder, and sitting inside of Flash is it's all anti-aliased. And so it looks clean. And there's a lot of animation effects you can apply and a lot of transition so effects you can apply. So it looks high tech. It looks phenomenal. Oh, I've seen one you were working on where it had like a rotated cube. Like you clicked login. You entered login information and you had a cube rotate effect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. See, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Now, now, if you want to see a lot of great examples out there, just kind of start looking around uh, online, searching for like flex and come up with some sort of effect, like a cube effect, and then type an example on Google. And, and you'll find a lot of online examples. And Code all, you can just grab and put uh, into your deal. In and you a got lot it? of cases, in a lot okay. of cases, depending on license. Um, or if nothing else, at least you can look at them and see what is capable of being accomplished. Now, Flex itself has a lot of uh, these effects and these sorts of things built in by default. Um, and then oh, okay. there's a lot of websites out there, uh, I believe one or two of which are sponsored by the Google Summer of Code, that uh, that extend that even further, that add additional functionality via uh, a mountain of action script that give you uh, even more effects or even more uh, now, formats that you can, you can deal with. With using Air and things like that, it also, I mean, it doesn't have to be an online app, but it has offline capability. Like like TweetDeck, I can, exactly. I can fire up on my laptop laptop and if i don't have a connection i can still read my old tweet deck history and so it can work offline it doesn't it, just exactly. because it's an air app doesn't mean it has to be integrated with an online service no well that's yeah. the whole thing if it's an air application it's on your desktop right if it's a flex application you then can actually put it on a website right now now this is the cool part so let's say you want to create a desktop application that is um what's a good example let's just say it is like chris was saying a little database application okay and it works pretty well. It runs on every one of the company's networks because this application runs on all three platforms. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Great. But now you want to put it on a website. Well, it's just a couple of changes to the project depending on how you developed it. And it now runs inside of a website. So you can have one for remote users that don't have the app. Right. You can have a native app for internal users. And I use the term native as in an application I'm double clicking and running on my desktop. Right. You got an icon, you got a yeah, shortcut, like you got that. you got a dot desktop file, whatnot. I really like that. It's very, very cool. And it, it's it's really hard to deny how powerful that is. And I, I mean, if you, when you look at the, the popular applications developed that are shipped with Adobe Air right now, the Tweet Deck and the Twirl, those applications, depending on how they're storing files locally, could be modified to run within a website as well. So those companies and those individuals that create they it could, could then always take go it, that route. And they're like, you know what? We're not we're not finding a good way to generate revenue. Let's take this and turn it into an online service. Hmm. Now this the great part here is there's actually companies out there that have developed large word processors that are very powerful. And yeah. again, because it's developed in Flex and Flash, fully anti-aliased, uh, beautiful fonts, great rendering, where it looks uh, in many cases far better terms of rendering than most things like Word and, like local, and Apple yeah. Pages and, and, and OpenOffice. Oh. And uh, and they can develop that as both a desktop application and a web application. I really like having that From the same code base. And, and uh, um, one, the one that uh, you may or may not have seen out there, uh, it's called like um, MindJet, and it's a mind mapping software. And uh, yeah. they, use, uh, they use Flex. And when you log in, it does the cube rotate. And uh, it's interesting because they originally initially started with a full desktop that they'd written natively for Windows. Right. That, uh, it, it, and they have managed to match every single feature. And it's online, web-based. All you need is Firefox. Right. And it uh, doesn't matter the OS. And you go in there and it's it's... It boggles the mind, all the functionality they have in there, integrated chat, integrated file architecture, sharing files. You can, it, it has, if you if you know a Visio or, or K diagram, it has diagramming capabilities with, with different elements. I mean, it's just yep. amazing. And it's like they've taken an application and they've just dropped it into a web page. And all, the only way I even know, the only possible giveaway I even know I'm on a website is because I have the Firefox toolbar above. It's surprisingly good. Yeah. It is surprisingly good what it's capable of. Now, of course, again, the downside, you're running with inside Flash. Some people might have issues with that. Um, if you don't have issues with that or your particular company, organization, or your clients don't care, that's pretty phenomenal. I mean, the sheer amount of flexibility you have is pretty great. Now, the downside here, of course, is if you're an experienced developer, you've got a lot of C Sharp, Objective-C, C++, Java, et cetera, Doesn't experience. Doesn't apply here? Oh, it always applies. No matter what language you're using, okay. everything applies. But... Flex development is a little different. Um, it does have a slight learning curve to get over, only in that things are done a little differently. Uh, you develop an application, uh, 
a lot of times is in a mixture of MXML and ActionScript. So you, you kind of have to figure out how to use both together. Oh, okay. um, there's a little bit of a learning curve there. Uh, and because you're developing within the self-contained environment, things are a little different. The metaphors are a little different. Okay. But once you get over that hump, and I'm not saying that's a hump that you have to go to school to learn for, for years and years. I'm talking of I'm talking about this is a weekend where you should just really hunker down for the weekend and just really play with it for it's a while. It's not so bad. And you'll get over it. Um, but once you get past that, that that initial learning curve, which is really just a day or two, um, it's amazing how productive you can be. Um, now, of course, the downside here is, uh, of course, you're not developing a standalone native desktop application where it, it adheres to the UI guidelines of the system up upon which is developed. And that you're not can the be a big theme. one depending on your audience. Right. right. And that also can apply and have a direct impact on usability, specifically uh, issues when you're dealing with uh, people who have visual disabilities uh, and that sort of thing. That mm. can be a real issue there, um, depending on the application. It's still doable. It's just there's there's a whole different. But, you know, I've never ways. looked at TweetDeck or Twirl and I've never looked at it and gone Shoot, I wish that looked more native. No, you, it's, you it's really a, never do. It really just works fine. That's and the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, uh, plus, you know, Adobe's thrown a lot of resources behind Flex yeah, Builder and Flash. And I mean, with Flash 10 coming along, it, it it's it's fantastic. I mean, and, and half of everyone on the planet already has it. So again, if you're developing applications, it's definitely something to keep in mind. But I highly recommend doing some serious investigation into the capabilities of what you can accomplish with Flex and Flex Builder before diving in with your project. Uh, look around, look online. There's websites, uh, I believe it's one's called something Flex Box. Uh, look, look online for Flex examples and sample code. You'll find a lot of websites, um, some of them developed in Flex themselves, that uh, show you and can showcase to you some of the really cool features there so that you really can get an idea for what is possible. And it's probably in the end depends on your project and what your goals are it, but it, it always does yeah but i gotta be honest if you're if you're deciding on a cross-platform application uh flex and flex builder are some of is some of the best way to go that's presently out there right. uh definitely yes. highly recommended it is of course from adobe uh that may be an issue for you it's not really for me but uh i highly recommend there you it. have it all right so that's Flex Builder 3.0. Yes. Um, like I said, if you haven't checked out the other videos yet, you're going to want to see those because that gives even more background as other alternatives. But uh, boy, do you already have something planned for the next one? Uh, yeah. So the next one, we're going to dive right back into Controversy Town and we're going to go for Mono Develop. Whoa. Uh, we've got a lot of other okay. ones and a lot of small ones we're going to hit after that. We want to hit Lazarus, of course. We want to hit Java Development and we're going to be looking at NetBeans as well. Uh, but next up, we're going to hit Mono Develop and we're going to be talking a little bit yep. about developing C Sharp and GTK Sharp and WinForm applications yep. across all the If platforms. you've heard us throw, away, throw around the term Mono or you've heard other podcasts talk about Mono, but you don't really know what it's all about, that's one you're not going to want to miss. But if you do what Mono's all, if you do know what Mono is about, Maybe it's time to tune into that to kind of learn a little bit more about the story. We're going to talk about where it's at currently, and we're going to be looking at MonoDevelop 2.0, which is currently in late beta right now. Fresh. And so if you're wondering what's capable with the current rev of what's about to hit with Mono, we're going to be talking about that. Then. Excellent. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching this episode of An In-Depth Look. We'll be back soon with part, with part four. Four. This episode of An In-Depth Look is sponsored by GoDaddy.com, the world's largest host and domain name registrar. If you're ready to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has got you covered. Domain names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting with unlimited disk space and bandwidth. Do-it-yourself website builders, dedicated servers, and SSL certificates, and so much more. Plus, as an in-depth viewer, enter promo code LINUX20 at checkout and save an additional 20% off any one, two, or even three years website hosting plan. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com daddy.com